Hello, everybody. This is Jonathan Diaz, uh, TK16890, with uh, the second episode of Under the Helmet. Uh, today we have Bill Schreiber, TK20177, and uh, he is our public relations officer for the ECG. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing great, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Good. How's, uh, how's everything going with uh, the whole COVID-19 situation for you? How's, how's everything been? You know what? We're, we're doing okay. You know, it's, it's been challenging, um, you know, but we're, we're trying to stay positive, uh, you know, with it. Um, you know, my, my, my main concern is, uh, you know, my family abroad, um, you know, just trying to keep uh, in touch with, you know, everybody off the island, um, you know, just checking in, whether it's text messages or, or um, you know, phone calls, just to make sure that they're doing okay. I mean, for me personally and my family here, um, I'm in IT, so I've worked from home uh, for many years now. Uh, so there really hasn't been much of a change there, you know, other, other than the kids being home, you know, now for it's a little over six weeks. So <laughs> that's been the most challenging part. Um, you know, if I do have to go out for supplies, it's donning the mask, wearing the gloves, yeah. everything, and uh, like most other people, you know, we're usually not more than a couple feet away from, uh, you know, uh, this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Which, ironically, I think this was given to me at a troop uh, like a year ago or something. Oh, there you so, go. <laughs> moral of the story is get out there and troop. You never know when somebody's going to hand you liquid gold, you know. Yeah, well, I've been lucky enough to still have a lot of hand sanitizer. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a store up the block from me that's selling it for like, it's like ten dollars for like a little bottle. Oh, Crazy. You know, if you could find those sites, the do-it-yourself sites and everything, make your oh, own. Yeah. You know, as only you know with the masks, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, you can't even find masks around here. So uh, I know a, a few people, you know, and my family included. You know, we have lots of materials, sewing mm -hmm. machines, and stuff like that. So, you know, anything that you can do. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's bringing a lot of people's creative sides out. Yeah. Seriously. Well, so you are the public relations officer for the Empire City Garrison. What does uh, that mean? What does that job entail for the people that aren't familiar with the uh, command staff? For uh, Sure. Work? Let me go into it. Um, so as the Garrison's public, public uh, relations officer, um, it is my responsibility to promote the Garrison and all of the fantastic things uh, you know, that it does. Um, I post accomplishments and highlights on social media, uh, statistics, um, uh, keep the uh, public aware of uh, upcoming events, um, which by the way, uh, we have our second virtual, you know, ECG virtual mm -hmm. troop coming up on May 2nd. Uh, so if you're watching this, um, tell your family, tell your friends, get involved. Uh, thank you for the plug, mm -hmm. um, that was great. Um, so we had our first virtual troop on April 4th, and that was a great success. Uh, we had uh, 22 uh, troopers post over 50 videos, um, ranging from public service announcements to full-blown music videos, and pretty much everything in between. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, so we have some great stuff uh, you know, lined up for the second. Um, but before I talk about that, I also want to mention that uh, uh, we raised uh, over $550 uh, for Island Harvest uh, on the last troop, um, local food pantry. Uh, and on this next troop on May 2nd, uh, we're raising funds for New York Common Pantry. And uh, it, it's going to be a good time. Uh, we, we have, like I said, we have a lot of great stuff lined up. And I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, well, we, maybe, maybe not that forward to it. I think tr uh, Chris is going to have me do Blasted Trooper again. Oh, so, yes, which was, uh, yeah. yeah, he's definitely not going to let you not do that one. That's what I get for borrowing his backdrop, and he's <laughs> shaming me into this. I mean, my daughters fired 200 darts at me last time, and I think three-quarters of those were headshots. So 
Uh, I'm probably going to get a lot of that. I think, uh, yeah, as, as Chris put it, he wants to add a little twist. He's like, well, let's, let's do a count and see how many actually stick to you. Let's try to get 50 stick to you. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm up against on this next route. <laughs> well, I mean, it should be fun and keep you nice and busy, and um, and uh, and I'm sure it's fun for your uh, girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, my my one daughter had that glazed look in her eyes. She's like, "I get to shoot you, point blank with these." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> it's for a good cause." <laughs> I keep telling myself that. So, besides all the PR stuff and being in the 501st, how did you first get into Star Wars? <sighs> um, well. I'm fortunate enough to have gotten in on the ground floor. Uh, I mean, I look back, I was an eight year old kid uh, playing in the living room, watching a black and white TV, mind you, to give you an idea, I'm <laughs> dating myself. Um, I'll never forget that first commercial that I saw, that trailer. And uh, the part that I remember most vividly about it is uh, Princess Leia, you know, saying, here they come. You know, and then you see those TIE fighters roll in and start strafing the Falcon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was just totally taken back by that. And I'm, I'm watching the TV and I'm like, you know, my sci-fi up to that point was um, Star Trek reruns, um, UFO, uh, Space 1999. And when I, when I saw that commercial, I was like, wow. Um, you know, I, I couldn't wait to, to see it when it came out. Fortunately, I had to wait like a week or so uh, to the, you know, the next weekend. Uh, I think it was the following weekend. And um, I had gone to a local movie theater, Sable Movie Theater, with a couple of friends. And the game plan was watch the movie. Then we were going to uh, call the, you know, uh, my friend's parents, you know, on the payphone and say, you know, come pick us up. Well, we get done with the movie. And we send the one guy, Johnny, over to call his parents. And we're like, just tell him we'll call. You know, it was a matinee. Yeah. So we saw the first showing that that afternoon, you know, on the weekend. And um, we're like, just tell him, you know, we'll call later. So as it, as it turned out, we stayed for three showings. You know, wow. we first row, we're in the first row, you know, pick back, you know, just watching it. And it, it had such an effect on me. Um, you know, you know, it, that, that was my first introduction to Star Wars. And, you know, from then it was, you know, what can you get your hands on as a, as a kid, you know, it's like just looking for anything. And, yeah, yeah. You know, my parents, you know, they, they got me the action figures, they, you know, my, uh, I remember at around Christmas time, my, uh, one of my cousins got an X-Wing and I got a TIE fighter, um, you know, which, you know, how, how appropriate. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the only thing that was horrible is I always lost the dog fights because the TIE fighter had those little buttons where you, you <laughs> the panels popped off. You know, my wings would fall off. So he won every dog fight. You know? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll never forget, you know, with the action figures, you know, I had them all, but I had six stormtroopers. I made sure I had a bunch of those. Yeah, they, were, they were my favorite character. And, um, you know, uh, when all my action figures, you know, went to my little cousins later on, I did keep one of those TKs and I, to the, I still have it to this day. It's in my, my showcase. And, I am a little and, younger, but I am lucky enough to have a few original stormtroopers. Oh yeah. Cool, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah. You know, so a, a combination, you know, of that and, um, yeah, just some great memories. Some so you've really been a fan since day one, we could say. Pretty much. I, I, I could say ground floor, day one. Um, and like it, it had a profound effect on me. And uh, yeah, just uh, great memories. Which brings me to my next question. From uh, your Toy Storm Trooper days, how'd you find out about the 501st and decide, hey, I'm going to become a real Storm Trooper? <laughs> so... Yeah, so uh, it, it's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fun story, too. Um, my daughter, Colette, uh, she, uh, we, we had uh, done a little bit of uh, cosplay uh, at Doctor Who conventions. 
and uh, my my oldest uh, daughter, she was getting into anime and really getting into the cosplay and wow. you know different cons. Wow. So she's like, hey, you know, uh, Eternal Con's coming up. It's over at the Cradle of Aviation Museum. You know, can you take me there? Blah blah blah. I was like, yeah, you know, pack the family up. Let's go. Um, so we parked the car. We're we're walking up uh, to the the front entrance to the cradle. And there's some Star there's some Star Wars uh, characters there. There's the TKs. Uh, you know, we had some stormtroopers there and some biker scouts. And I, I look over at my girls. They look at me and they're like, "Yeah, we'll see you inside." Because <laughs> they've heard the stories over the years. You, you want to talk about a bucket list, you know, moment? Um, when I was when I was a kid, it was probably like the following Halloween. I'm at a, a party, a Halloween party over at one of my relatives' house, and my uncle comes over with one of his friends, and um, you know they were probably around college age, and uh, they came dressed up as stormtroopers. So I'm looking, and you know, I was probably about like nine ish somewhere at, at the time, and I'm looking up. Now these could have been like one of those party store costumes, you know, so. They, they were nothing like, you know, what we're dealing with now, but, you know, to a nine-year-old kid, I mean, this was the greatest thing. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, one day I'm going to do that. I, I, you know, I'm going to dress up as a stormtrooper on Halloween. So uh, fast forward many, many years later, um, um, you know, so I see these stormtroopers and biker scouts in, in uh, the front entrance. So I go walking over. So what's the first thing that happens to me? I get a summons from Chris Feehan, yep. you know, <laughs> one of our bikers. you know, how appropriate, you know, years later, I, I've probably seen him hand out probably about 10,000 of those, you know, tickets. So Chris hands me one of those things. I make a beeline right over to one of the stormtroopers that winds up, winds up, it was Alan. So I, I start, I start talking his ear off. I, I was probably out there a good 20, you know, 20 plus minutes. And, um, you know, so I'm being respectful, you know, but at the same time, I'm asking questions when he's, you know, not, you know, with people coming up. Oh, yeah, we all do that. And he was fantastic. I mean, they all were. So, you know, Alan and Steve and Chris and, you know, some of the other people that were there. So when I made my finally, you know, half an hour later, when I make my way into the cradle, into the actual Eternal Con, um, after a while, I found where the 501st was. I found our, you know, I found the garrison. I found Rebel Legion and stuff. So I start asking all the questions. I find out about the forums and this and that. I think it was uh, that, yeah, that afternoon. I had run out to my car, and um, I to get signal because I had no signal inside the cradle. So I run out to my car and I signed. I registered for the Empire City Garrison huh. forum right there on the spot. You know, it, you know, because they're like, oh, you know, join the forum, ask the questions and this and that and everything. So anybody watching this, if, if you're, you know, looking at joining or if you have questions about, you know, costumes and you know, stuff like that, you know, best things to do. Ask the questions, join. I, I, uh, I registered on the Empire City Garrison Forum, uh, the Legion, 501st Legion Forum, uh, First Imperial Stormtrooper Detail. I mean, I did all of that stuff within 24 hours. Um, I'm in there. I think I had my first PK outfit ordered, um, you know, within that first 24 hours. Wow. You I was, know. Jonathan, I was obsessed. I was obsessed. Um, and also, too, any, anybody looking at getting into this, um, I, I had no patience at the time. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted a kit right away. I, I, that was in June. I, I wanted to be ready by uh, Halloween. That was my goal. You know, so uh, the best advice is do your homework, ask a lot of questions, um, um, be patient, and uh, have reasonable expectations. Uh, because these kits, you don't just go to a store and buy them. You don't just hit, you know, purchase on a website and you get it and you wear it. No you're getting a kit and you're going through the, you know, the building process and all of that. And, uh, you know, it, it takes some time and, uh, you know, gathering, not just the arm, like in my case, uh, stormtrooper armor, TK armor, it's all the, 
you know, the accessories, your socks, your boots, your blaster, and, you know, and all the tools, you know, specialized tools that you may need. Yes. And, um, and also, like I said, you know, I was picking everybody's brain. Uh, I started going to, I, I went onto the forum. I looked at the calendar to see what events were coming up. I, I, I was probably going to one or two troops a month over that, you know, those first six plus uh -huh. months. So at, at one point, one of the guys in the garrison, I won't say who, but, uh, you know, he's like, hey, here's that stalker. <laughs> you know? I was like, <laughs> like, oh, no, I got stalker status, you know. No, don't worry. I used to do yeah. this. Yeah, oh, wow. you know, and uh, it, it was funny because, uh, you know, I, I'd go, I'd be asking the questions, I'd be asking to take pictures and video. You know, I want to see how seams look and I want to see how this goes together and that. You know, because when you when you get the armor, you know, it's it's a question of okay, you can watch YouTube videos and there are certain instructions and stuff like that, but there could be little nuances from kit to kit and everything. Um, you know, when I uh, when I um, started, uh, you know, I had placed an order for that one kit, but they said it was going to be a year wait, so I started calling around. I'm like, I can't wait. Here. I, don't got, I don't got that kind of patience. You know, I, I got to be in, you know, by Halloween. So I, I started making, uh, you know, inquiries around and finally somebody turned me on to uh, Walt's Trooper Factory. Yep, Walt, so. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I got in touch with Walt and, uh, you know, at, at one point I asked him, you know, so what's the, the waiting, you know, period, you know, what's the, uh, you know, uh, you know, a backlog or anything. And, you know, he's like, uh, yeah, I could, you know, have one ready in about six weeks. I'm like, what's your PayPal? I'll send the money over right now, you know, because everybody else was like a year or two, you know, so I find six weeks. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> you know? um, you learn in the five hours is that you learn how to be very patient because everything takes a lot of time. <laughs> everything. Oh, yeah. And, and like I said, you know, patience and, and having reasonable expectations. Uh, going in, uh, you know, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know certain things took a while, you know, to get. And uh, <laughs> so when I got that call from Walt, I mean, that's like, you know, just under, you know, the birth of my kids, you know, saying, hey, your, your kit's ready, you know. So I'm like, don't ship it. I'll, I'll hop in the car and I'll come get it. So he's like, say what? I'm like, do you mind if I come up? So I drove up to Connecticut. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll drive up and get it. He's like, okay. <laughs> you know, Walt was great. He gave me a tour of his place. He showed me the shop, everything. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, you know, so, but um, putting it together and everything like that, it, it takes time. And in my case, uh, you know, I'm a little bit bigger than the typical, you know, stormtrooper. So I had to get some customized parts and stuff, which I, I had gotten some stuff from Walt. Um, which was great, you know, but certain things take time and rightfully so, you know? Um, so yeah, that, 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 uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, no, 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 no. but, uh, yeah, so that, that's, that was my, uh, my first experience with the 501st and, did uh, you build your own costume or did you have someone help you? How'd you, oh, no, 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 no. So, well, let me, let me, uh, yeah, let me get into that. So I built my costume. Um, and uh, let's see. So I asked for a lot of advice along the way, you know, some of it before I even took possession of my armor. And some of it, you know, as I was building it, which is uh, not I, <laughs> what, what's that? I don't know, which is the right thing to do, everyone. Ask as many questions as you. Oh yeah, yeah. Measure twice and ask fifty questions, yep. then cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> um, I had guardian angels along the way, and you know, you, you always hear about paying it forward. So, um, my guardian angels in the garrison, uh, like I, I, uh, I asked tons of questions, you know, uh, with Alan. I asked questions with Dave. I asked questions. Uh, Rocky and so on and so on and stuff. Uh, um, so when I was, uh, you know, working, you know, on the kit, you know, I had gotten to, you know, certain parts, 
you know, of it. I'm sending pictures back and forth, or if I needed, um, you know, hey, where do I, you know, get this or that? Uh, Alan would send me text messages with links and this and that, and you know, where to find stuff. Rocky hooked me up with a, you know, vendor for certain Lexan scissors and this and that. Actually, I built everything on my kit, but I did have help uh, from Rocky with my helmet. Um, you know, so uh, you know, there was just something about the helmet that you know was a little. Uh, you know, all right, I'm fine with everything else, but yeah, you know, that's the part you want to be perfect. That's the that everybody's everybody's looking at that helmet. So I've since gotten other helmets and other kits and everything, and uh, you know, so that that was that was like the, the one part where I I really wanted you know some help on that. Um, and then when I when it came time to actually strap everything together, uh, I had a member uh, actually come to my house like three out of four weekends, you know, right before, you know, I uh, did my uh, submission, you know, for approval. And uh, like I said, you know, paying it forward. I, I, I had a lot of help and guidance, you know, from within the, uh, within the garrison. And uh, I, I also went to a, one of our members had an armor party. And let me tell you something, uh, you could watch all the YouTube videos and, and read instructions and stuff like that. But getting out with a bunch of people, like 20 members that have done multiple kits and they have that tribal knowledge, um, which is priceless. You know, they have all the tips and tricks and saying, oh, well, you know, this is how they usually tell you to do it. But if you do it this way, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So if you bend over, you're not sending 50 snaps and pop them. <laughs> yeah, that is the best. Yeah. So, you know, little that tips and tricks. Awesome. Yeah. And let me tell you, you know, over the over the years, I've I've had uh, people come to me at you know conventions and, and stuff, asking me how to get into it or uh, if they had questions about assembling something. And let me tell you, you know, you get to the point where you're like, hey, here's my number, uh, reach out to me. If you have any questions, you know, you start getting excited, you know, helping somebody getting into it, and um, you know, so you, you try to pay it forward. No, yeah, that's the best thing too. And that's one of the best parts about this group. Everyone, like I told Chris, it's a big brotherhood. Everyone's very connected. Yeah. Uh, so, how long have you been in the uh, 501st now? How many years? Uh, uh, my submission and approval, uh, I was approved in August of 2017. Okay, so it's been, it's been a little while now. Yeah. So, yeah. In that time, what is the most rewarding troop that you have done or most rewarding thing you've done? Um, first. Um, I, I mean, every troop that you do, um, there is, you know, a, a reward. Um, whether it's a, a troop at a library or a sporting event or, you know, a con or this or that, it, you know, you make a little kid smile, you know, they come up to you, you know, they <laughs> grab your leg or something, you know, um, you know, it's re just putting on the armor and making somebody smile. And it's not just kids. I mean, you're making, you know, adults smile too. You, yeah. know? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's hard to differentiate, you know, who got, you know, more excited, you know, the kid or his parents, you know, <laughs> You know, you get those, oh, um, can, can you take, can we take a picture with you? You know, it's for, you know, oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> um, but as far as rewarding uh, troops, um, uh, you know, there's, um, you know, also uh, sentimental and, you know, everybody gets into trooping for different reasons. Of course. Uh, you know, they like certain types of troops or this or that. Um, I have uh, a nephew uh, who is autistic, and uh, I'll never forget, we had a uh, troop roll around. It was an autism event over at Jones Beach. And um, when that rolled around, uh, it, was, um, it was a great participation from the garrison. We had a bunch of members there. And, um, uh, you know, we took pictures uh, with people, you know, there. Uh, but they, you know, they put us over at the start. It was a walk. Um, it was a walk for awareness and also to raise funds. 
and uh, they put us over at the start finish line and you literally had thousands of people walking by you and you're you know high-fiving them and and uh, you know they'll come over and um you know take selfies with you and and this and that and it was just it was just a great event i i remember having you know a real you know uh, great feeling i mean i you know we have great feelings you know you know at you know at many events and, and everything but that one that was very sentimental and it hit home you know for me um very rewarding uh recently i've done a couple of troops uh over at stony brook hospital um i was told by a member uh you know that you know those troops can get emotional and um so uh, one of those uh, troops was uh, for a birthday party for a five-year-old boy and uh we had darth vader and uh we had a, a security detail of a, a td and a tk and um so we go there and when we entered the room uh, they set up um, this one room for the birthday party when we entered that room this boy's face lit up like a christmas tree and it was just absolutely amazing um he just beelined to darth vader you know <laughs> It would have been nice if he came over to a TK. You know, I, I, I'm not even sure he even saw us in the room. He just went right over to Darth Vader. And um, he, for the entire time that we were there, it was like a mile a minute, a mile a minute. I, I am amazed that Darth Vader didn't lose his voice. Uh, completely amazed. Uh, it was just, it was just great. It was, it was, it was fantastic. Um, but the, the part that really got me was at the end of the troop, little boy um, looked up at his mom, you know, because she said, all right, you know, it's time to go. He looks up at her and with the eyes of a, a five-year-old, you know, he's like, mom, can, can, do you think it'd be all right if Darth Vader could sleep over? <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I was wearing a bucket because, I was starting to tear up, you know, right there because, you know, this kid, you know, you know, just the sincerity and, you know, he was having such a good time with, with Lord Vader. And, um, you know, I, you know, if we could have, we would have stayed there, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was, that was like, like that member said, you know, they can be emotional and yeah, that was emotional rewarding like you said um i'll never forget that troop never yeah the, the same thing was told to me the first time i went to a hospital troop and it's very true it's a good thing you're wearing a helmet because you yeah. definitely shed a couple tears in there but it's super amazing experience and you know making these kids happy that are not doing too great is amazing yeah and to have them forget about everything for yes for a couple an minutes. hour and a half or two hours you know you know if you know it's a great thing yeah. uh so i know you're a big sports fan i am not the biggest sports fan in the world uh but i do know you watch a one particular podcast guilty as charged guilty as charged i am a sports fan and i do know you watch a, 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 a this one particular podcast where they ask a certain question at the end uh we'll just uh ask you the same question but we will reward it for uh Star Wars purposes, all right? And I think where you're going with this. <laughs> so if you were trapped in a foxhole, what Star Wars character would you most likely have in there with you to help you get out? This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So yes, guilty as charged. I, I watch Michael Kay, um, center stage, and uh, I, I've been watching that for years. Um, all right, I'm laughing. All right. <laughs> so, um that is that is a good twist. I uh like I said, I've been watching that show for years and I've thought, you know, on occasion, you know, so who would I want, you know, in a foxhole with me and, and stuff like that and it, it's easy. It, it, my friend Dan, um he's a ex Navy SEAL. Um he's a black belt, he's a uh, a black belt in three different disciplines. Uh we spend a lot of time at the range together. So yeah, it'd be my buddy, Dan, fantastic human being. But this twist, what Star Wars character? Um, 
uh, I got to get this right now. <laughs> um, Definitely well, not a stormtrooper. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, you know, I was just watching Rise of Skywalker. So, uh, you know, as intriguing as Dark Ray, you know, would be, I don't know enough about her. You know, she might just like force raise me and use me as a human shield and then cause me <laughs> yeah. something like that. So, uh, um, yeah, all right. So this TK, uh, uh, this TK will have to go with the boss. I'm going to have to go with Darth Vader. Um, What's wrong with that answer? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the safe answer. <laughs> well, that is awesome. Uh, super happy you could talk with me today. Uh, we'll try and have... Pleasure to be here. This is great. We'll probably try and have most of the links to all the things we talked about. Uh, below in the description and uh yeah thanks everybody uh have a good day bye guys bye bill all right thank you